Good morning. Uh, this is um, and welcome all of you attending this zoning administrator meeting of July 2nd, uh, 2020. Uh, my name is Andy Gustafson. I am senior planner with the city planning and economic development department, and I am zoning administrator for this meeting. Um, today, uh, we have support uh, from the recording secretary and also staff from the city. Uh, during the course of the meeting, uh, these, these folks will help us out uh, coordinating uh, how the presentation of various items on our agenda today will be heard and also we'll be coordinating um, uh, public comments during the period when uh, that uh, a particular item will have public comments um, uh, solicited. Um, at this time, uh, I just want to briefly review how as a Zoom participant, if you're wanting to comment um, or as a telephone participant, you can do so. Uh, for Zoom, please, when uh, we open the public meeting for comment, uh, raise your hand using the icon on this Zoom screen, and we will we will um, recognize you in turn and allow you to speak. Um, you have to unmute yourself when you do so. And then those of you uh, who are calling in, you press star nine, and we will see that you want to make a comment, and you'll be also recognized in the same manner. Um, if you do hear any questions which or, or comments that have been previously raised, uh, please uh, uh, allow that comment or, or question. Don't repeat the comment or question. We do have a pretty full agenda today, and so my hope is that we can be pretty efficient in, in moving through the seven items that, that uh, are on our agenda. So, um, at this point, I, I want to uh, ask the recording secretary if um, we are ready to start with the meeting. I'd like to share the screen uh, just to show the agenda. Um, the first item in a public meeting will be to allow public comment by anyone in attendance who wishes to comment on a matter that is not on the agenda. If, if you do, uh, please raise your hand if you're on Zoom or press star nine. I see we have 16 people in attendance and, and none have raised their hand wishing to make comment at this point. So now I'd like to turn uh, to our agenda. And um, the first item, is a minor design review uh, for 50 Mission Circle, Santa Rosa, and the project planner is Mike Wixon. And recording secretary, if you can switch or allow Mr. Wixon to give his staff presentation. Um, thank you very much. So this is a, a really straightforward minor addition to an existing McDonald's restaurant. Uh, the, can, can everybody, can you hear me okay right now? Yes, you're, you're very clear and audible, thank you. Okay, good. So I'll keep going. And um, basically there's some minor changes going on in the parking lot for restriping some ADA enhancements. And then at the uh, eastern, kind of the northeastern side of the building is a small little, about 120 square foot addition for a cash handling area. And the cash handling area is being added uh, as a result of proposing a tandem drive-through. And so this will be the second cash handling booth. Um, you can see if you can switch to the elevation at the end, Kimberly. So you can see here in the color, I think there's one more to go. So, perfect, there you go. And so you can see the, uh, the cash handling booth added there with the window on the upper elevation, kind of the left side 
uh, area there. And so it's consistent with the existing design uh, that's there. It's a very minor modification and staff's recommending approval with uh, standard conditions that are listed in the, um, the resolution. And that's basically my presentation. It, it's a pretty straightforward item. Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. This is Andy, um, zoning administrator. Can you put the site plan back on the screen on this one, please? So it would be, you want to see the site plan, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, actually, I do believe that the, the next slide showing the building footprint. Um, but just for clarification here, Mr. Wixon, if you can, um, the, the scope of work or the changes that are contemplated are shaded there in the building and the, the drive through cash uh, area um, is there at the bottom. So the outward, the outside footprint of the building doesn't change. It's just simply how they're allocating space. Uh, I, I see that there's an extension on the left side of the shaded area. Is that the, the area of work that triggered the need for this minor design review? Uh, correct. So the cash handling area is on the, the bottom part of the building, the unshaded part. And that's okay. A, it's a six by 20 area, roughly. So it's, it, that is an expansion of the building, but it's a very minor expansion. And everything and else, I, everything else shaded within the building is uh, kind of a re it, it's just enhancements inside. So okay. update. very good. Thank you. Um, at this point, I'd like to give the applicant opportunity to comment if they wish to do so. Hi, yes, uh, this is Oro Mariano with Stantec Architecture. Uh, we're one of the architects working with McDonald's on their um, refresh and rebranding um, of all of their um, existing stores. Uh, this one was one of the uh, special items um, because it is a mission style building. Um, we took care and, you know, with, with the expansion of the um, cash booth and the addition of the second order point um, for this restaurant, um, you know, in, in regards to the, the entire center. And, and we did work with planning staff prior to um, submitting our application um, because we were concerned about the expansion that we were doing. Um, and then, it, it was determined um, even prior to us um, submitting that um, the addition was uh, was relatively minor um, in comparison to the, the overall um, building. Um, and just for clarification, the areas that are shaded within the building footprint um, is actually area of work that we're not um, touching. Um, the areas that are, are left open are um, are the areas that we are working on. Um, we do already have a permit for the interior modification um, and the color of the building um, actually that we um, that we went through with uh, during the building permit process. Uh, this addition and the modification to the drive through is what triggered the planning or the minor uh, minor design review. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Is there any other member of the applicant team that wishes to comment at this point? No. All right, now I'd like to um, offer opportunity for the public in attendance to comment here. Um, according secretary, I please be on the lookout for raised hands. Um, those participating in Zoom, please remember to click your hand uh, to do so, or those of you who are participating by telephone to press star nine. I do not see any members of the public requesting a comment. I will close the public meeting and at this point.
So I think this is a, a pretty straightforward and as said at the onset by Mr. Wixon, a simple um, design modification to the to the building. It has very little um, change to its outward appearance. Um, I did review the resolution and I find that the proposed findings supporting the recommended approval of this minor design review are appropriate. This project I'll note does qualify for a CEQA exemption, uh, class one minor modification uh, of, of an existing building. And the uh, conditions of approval are, are, are standard for this type of work. So I will um, uh, approve the recommended uh, findings and conditions of approval as written. I will say that this should any matter, should this, should there be any party who is aggrieved by this item or this decision, um, they have 10 days to appeal and the uh, appeal date deadline will be, I'm gonna have to look at a calendar because I don't have that in front of me, uh, will be the 13th of July, Monday, uh, 13th of July, the end of the day. Uh, if anybody wishes to appeal, uh, please contact the project planner and they'll inform you of the process and the fee. Uh, so with that, let's continue to the next item on the agenda, which is the conditional use permit for 6194th Street. Um, the project planner, oops, excuse me, I am gonna, I pulled the wrong page. The second item on the agenda is um, a new ADU uh, over a garage. Um, it is a hillside development permit at, located at 2808 Canyon Drive, Santa Rosa. And the project planner is Monet Sikali. Monet, if you would give your presentation. Thank you. Sure, thank you. And good morning, Mr. Gustafson. As you mentioned, this is a minor hillside development permit for the property located at 2808 Canyon Side Drive. So uh, can I see the PowerPoint, please? Thank you. Next page. So the proposed project is to construct an 1814 square foot garage with a 1175 square foot of accessory dwelling unit. I have to mention that the ADU or the accessory dwelling unit is not subject to a hillside permit. Only the accessory structure attached to the ADU will be part of this hillside development permit. Can we go to the next page? So this is the location of the project, the site. The site is located in an area that's zoned RR40, stands for Rural Residential, and the general plan land use is very low density residential. Next page, please. This is the location of the proposed ADU with the garage. As you can see, is on the lower side of the property it has 15 feet setback from the rear side and 20 feet and more than 30 on other on the side sides and uh, it's lower it's located on more flat area of the property can can we go to the next page please so this is a topo map that shows location of the proposed adu and accessory structure the green area is most, it shows the location that is less than 10%. The yellow and red area is the, it, the one that has a slope more than 10%. And only portion of the structure and driveway will be located on the area with slope 10%. The structure will be placed on area that is already like a playground. And there is a finding in the zoning code that says, that um, says if like not says, but is, is if the pro structure is not on a ridge line, and it doesn't like a uh, uh, block the ridge line, we can support that. If we go to the next slide, I can show location of that structure. So on the left side, we have a driveway entrance to that property, and the X mark all the way in the back shows location of the proposed structure. 
on the right picture, we have a we have a street above the house. As you can see, you cannot see the proposed structure from the street above. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is the north elevation shows the location of the structure, which is going to be mostly on a flat area. The height of the structure will be 25 feet and ADU can be up to 27 feet, but the proposed structure is 25 feet. Can we go to the next slide, please? These are the elevations of the proposed structure. So the ADU will be part of the structure and there will be four garage proposed for this accessory structure. Can we go to the next slide? So a notice went out to neighbors within 600 feet. I have received two emails from neighbors one of them, they also called me and I explained them proposed project. And she also told me that she's rep represented, representing some neighbors in that neighborhood. Both of the emails that came, they are opposing this project. I'm going to just give a summary and reason what the neighbor, what, why these neighbors are opposing this project. One of the main reasons that they had was the height of the project. They were against 25 feet height of this proposed project. One another concern was the site is located in a high fire area and they had concerns about fire. And another discussion that they had was a density and they said that the structure is located in a high density area. And also neighbors had concern about their view and privacy and uh, another con concern they had was about property value. I tried to explain to them that the ADU is permitted by right. And the reason this project is going to ZA meeting is because of the accessory structure attached to the ADU and being proposed on a hillside. So the project has been reviewed in compliance with California Environmental Quality Act, and it's qualifies for exemption under 15303, which project is an accessory structure for existing residential use. Staff recommendation for this proposed project is approval. And that's my presentation. I'm available to answer questions. And I believe the applicant is also available. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sikali. Um, now, if the applicant wishes to um, comment or add more information, you're, you are welcome to do so. I um, assume that the applicant does not want to comment at this point. Um, I'll give a moment to confirm by taking a look at the attendee list. Would you have a hand? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. My name is Rod Brownlee. I am the applicant. I'm here with my wife, Karen Brownlee. We live at the uh, proposed project location at 2808 Canyonside Drive. We have lived at that residence. That's our primary residence. We have lived there since uh, 1998. We are both uh, long-term members or residents of Sonoma County. I've lived in Sonoma County since uh, 1964. The uh, proposed project is for uh, the ability for to uh, have our son and his young family have a residence there and long term uh, use may be for our mothers as they age and potentially need uh, a little more assistance in living. Uh, we have worked with uh, planning department and done some modifications to the original sets of plans uh, to lessen the impact uh, to the to the property. We've spun it 90 degrees from its original proposal. We have uh, 
redone the architectural to mirror the original image to put the highest side of the project on the lowest portion of the lot. We have also lessened the roof line uh, and all these were done in an effort to uh, be as amicable and, and sensitive to the project in general. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Um, and I, I do want to clarify the action today is um, for the structure that um, is is the accessory building, but not the the uh, accessory dwelling unit. That is a use that's permitted by right. But in this case, it's being built in conjunction with um, the garage, two car garage or workshop um, that that's attached to it. Um, at this time, I would like to open this item for public comment and for neighbors in attendance who wish to comment, uh, please raise your hand and the hearing secretary will recognize you and you will need to unmute yourself to, uh, to, to speak. Thank you. Hearing secretary, if you can take a look at that list, I'm looking at it now. And I see we have one uh, member of the public wishing to. Mr. Cho, you should have a prompt. And if you answer the prompt, you'll be able to speak. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. So um, sorry for me being 22 minutes late. A number of neighbors have not been able to get in. So I'm very concerned that we're not able to give the right opportunity to actually participate in this meeting. So I'd like to get an advice from you guys as how this should be addressed. We followed the directions uh, on the place card that was sent to us and everything was completely non-existent, didn't exist, et cetera. So I don't know why the place card was, had that inc incorrect information. Mr. Cho, can you describe or explain how you were able to join this meeting? The way I was able to, I had to call Monet, left a voicemail, and then I wrote her an email. And then she sent me an email a couple minutes ago. I've been on hold and working with someone else from, the, from your guys' office, and they helped me direct me into the live stream, which obviously I could not respond. And that's when I saw Monet's email just a couple minutes ago. Again, this is Andy, uh, the zoning administrator. One more question. Are, are there any- um, it Came at 10.39. Are there any other members in participation or uh, in attendance here wishing to speak on this matter? If so, please raise your hand so I get a sense of how many others, if any, have joined us on this request. No, I'm, I'm sorry. They, they've not been able to get on because we're trying to figure out how to get on. I'm the first one on, on from them. Thank you. I, I, um, I was just seeking confirmation that um, the list of attendees uh, have, uh, are, there are no other attendees on the list uh, for this matter. I'm going to email I, to one of my fellow neighbors in a minute here. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Cho, I think um, let's now devote uh, this time for you to make your comments and I will uh, separately consider whether or not we have a notice defect in this matter. Um, so please take this time and, and present your comments. So, yeah, so originally about three months ago, uh, Mr. Brownlee's wife uh, drove up onto our property and happened to speak to my wife and gave us a heads up that they intended to um, build a small structure on their property for a granny unit 
And we said, not a problem, small structure, we're in support, we're trying to be a good neighbor, and we're fine with that. And that we would get a notification in the mail um, in, in the near future. Three months later, approximately, we get this notification uh, place card uh, from, uh, I believe, the Santa Rosa City. And um, in further detail, it is not a small structure. I would say a 3,000 square foot structure is larger than the average home in Sonoma County. It drastically impacts our privacy, safety of my kids, and safety of those around the neighborhood. Um, we bought our house five years ago um, with the understanding that this was fully developed and the intention would be to maintain um, the low density of this area as well as maintain the safety of my family and the privacy of my family as well. What I would, we are. Uh, I'm sorry. But did, did that conclude your comment? I we are not with my keyboard. Mr. Brownlee, we are not against Mr. Brownlee um, building a structure. We support that. Um, we would ask that um, Mr. Brownlee and Mrs. Brownlee consider um, developing a structure that is more amendable um, to the neighborhood, and that would mean. Uh, reducing the square footage of that um, and also reducing the number of garages, which seem excessive because I think his house has already two or three garages and he's adding another four garages onto the property. So to the extent that uh, the Brownleys can consider reducing the size of that structure and being a fellow good neighbor uh, would be much appreciated which would mean moving that structure closer to his house, because currently right now where he intends to build that, that structure is closer to my family than to his family, and as well as other neighbors. Thank you. Um, if that concludes your comments, I would like to um, keep the public meeting or hearing portion of this item open um, but take the moment now uh, to speak with the project planner uh, regarding the noticing. And um, if necessary, we will um, we will strive to to resolve this matter at this at this meeting, but we may have to move it to the to the end of the meeting for us to work out um, the noticing issue. Um, Ms. Zikali, can you comment on the noticing? regarding the Zoom meeting information and, and how that is conveyed to the public, um, whether it's printed on the card and or available on the zoning administrator website for the person who has received the notice. So it is available on the card and also available on our website. And I believe same notice that went to the applicant is same notice as it went to neighbors. So. I just got the email from Mr. Cho and I tried to send him the link. So the, the notice that went is similar as other notice that went to the neighbor. I don't know what's the problem there. Is it a technical problem? I'm not aware of that, but I believe everyone got the same notice. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cho, uh, can you tell me where you got information to enter this meeting? Did you receive a postcard mailed to your address? How did you learn about this meeting? It was the same postcard that everybody received in the mail. Um, and it says online access, and it's got the Zoom address, it's got the meeting ID, it's got a phone access, it's got a web ID number, which is the same ID number for the, for the uh, Zoom, and none of those were functioning. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is there any other member in the audience who wishes to comment on this matter at this time?
See, uh, uh, Mr. Cho, could you please uh, lower your hand at this point? I had a question. Well, uh, I thought your, your comments have concluded and I'll recognize your question in a moment, but first I'd like to provide opportunity for anybody else in attendance to comment. And uh, you currently have your name, your hand up. If you could lower it, I, I will recognize you uh, in a moment. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I see uh, no, uh, no one who has entered on um, Zoom nor uh, for those of you who have called in, um, you can press star nine and we can recognize you. If you've called in and you wish to comment on this matter, please press star nine. Seeing none, um, I, will, I will leave this public comment period open, but I, I do want to um, uh, have this matter, revisit this matter, uh, this item at the end of this agenda so that staff can confirm that proper and adequate notice was sent out um, and and that there were, um, uh, there was adequate uh, information to allow participation. This is a, a critical issue. This is the same kind of noticing we do when we uh, have face-to-face -face meetings uh, before we've had to resort to these remote meetings uh, using Zoom. So, um, Mr. I, yes. Um, I think that I might be able to offer a little bit of insight. Um, the There were actually two notices sent out for this meeting. Uh, the first one was sent out and then we had to send a second one because the Zoom information did change. So I see. So two separate notices sent out, one was clearly language that showed that it was an updated notice. So it, it, it provided a, a headline a statement that there was a change in the noticing information so the reader would understand the, the, they That's needed correct. to pay attention. Okay. There was a bold headline across the postcard and the Zoom information was in bright red. And was that notice issued um, at least 10 days in advance of this meeting? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, so thank you for, for confirming that and, and making that clarification. Um, so while uh, the first notice may have had some information that needed correction, the second notice did go out in time with the correct information. Um, so that is not a material defect in terms of informing the neighborhood of this matter coming before uh, the zoning administrator for discussion. So I think um, we do have opportunity to uh, take action on this, but uh, out of uh, you know recognition, maybe there was some confusion. Uh, Mr. Cho, if you are capable of doing so, I would invite you to contact um, other parties that are interested in this matter and they can call in um, and and um, they then can comment. I will move this matter to the end of the agenda and we'll continue with the rest of the um, our, our meeting and then we'll re return to this uh, so that we'll give neighbors opportunity. Um, I do see that we have a number of new guests that have joined and I'm gonna invite uh, people to raise their hands if they wish to comment on this particular matter, please raise your hand now. And for those of you who are on telephone, please press star nine. And I see two uh, guests or attendees have raised their hand. So recording secretary, let's recognize them in turn and allow public comment. There are two. Mr. 
Mr. Godwin, you should have a prompt to unmute yourself. Mr. Goodwin. Yes, hello. Hello. We can hear you, go ahead. Okay, this is open for public comment now. Yes, please proceed. Okay, I'm uh, one of the neighbors that did receive the, the updated notice of public meeting regarding this um, massive structure that uh, has been, um, you know, asked to be built in our neighborhood here. Um, and, you know, I'm totally and completely against this. Um, I wish that um, this would not be built. Um, our neighborhood is such that, um, you know, I moved here, I don't know, it must have been about 16 years ago or 17 years ago now. And, and um, you know, I moved into a neighborhood where the, the setback of the homes was, what was I, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for low density and, and, and space between homes. And uh, if, a, if a project like this was allowed to be um, pushed through, that defeats the purpose of the neighborhood. Um, not to mention that, uh, you know, there are multiple neighbors, um, such as Mr. Cho, who spoke earlier, and then also up on the, that live up uh, off of Trailwood Drive, that this would severely impact their homes. And, um, you know, my opinion on this is, I, I, I think this is, this is a gross exaggeration of being, uh, you know, a granny type unit. Um, and quite frankly, it's just, you know, on another note is just simply not neighborly. Um, you know, there are gonna be people looking at this, this building that's gonna be built and it's going to, you know, impact their their views and, and impact the value of their homes. And I'm, again, I'm asking that it not be built. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe what we do is maybe he can build it closer to his house. You know, he's going to be this, this, this structure that's proposed is going to be closer to his neighbor's home than his actual own residence. So I just, I don't, I don't get it, but you know, if, if, the law states what the law states and and um, laws have changed for the construction of ADU units, then so be it. Of course, the governor that, that uh, actually signed those laws into place here in the state of California is no longer, you know, is no longer our governor. He himself has moved to the middle of nowhere and is now living on a ranch here somewhere in California with no neighbors. So. I thought that was kind of ironic. Anyway, thank you. Again, I, okay. All right. Um, thank you very much for your your comments. Um, and now, is there anyone else in, uh, who wishes to to comment? And Construction. I see someone else wishes to comment, and that's deep built construction. According to Secretary, can you um, uh, permit that guest to participate? Recording secretary, we do have a member of the public that wishes to comment. Deep built construction, are they on the list anymore? And they need to respond to a prompt to be able to speak. Um, can you hear me? I did respond. We can hear you. Perfect, thank you very much. Well, my name is Michelle and I am a potential this project. And we have been working on this project 
and the city of Santa Rosa for approximately seven and a half months. Um, we did have a site visit with Monet and we did take into consideration um, all the and um, comment that Monet had suggested on the site visit. We have um, worked with the architects to make sure that this project um, is concurrent with the contour of the land. We have also made um, taken into consideration the um, design of the building, which is very um, the construction of the current home that sits on the property. Um, so I just wanted to put into consideration that we have done a lot, of, excuse me, a lot of homework um, and put in consideration of fitting the building to where it does contour to the land, which is a suggestion of Monet, which we did find that was a great idea. I just wanted to let you guys know that um, we, are, we are doing everything that we possibly can to help move forward with this project. And um, that's what I'd like to say. Thank you. And um, can I, may I ask, are you, I've missed that your, your introduction, are you um, the owner or are you a, a builder for the owner? We are a potential builder for the owner, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. Goodwin's uh, mic continues to be on. Could we mute him, please? Recording secretary, thank you very much. Um, so I, I, I want to um, ask the recording secretary uh, whether there's new information regarding the notice on this particular matter. And um, if you could share that with us, please. I would have to check to see what we sent to the printer. I can't check that right now. Thank you. Um, are there any other members in attendance that wish to comment on this matter? I apologize, my mute switch is erratic. Um, seeing none, I'll close the public meeting at this time. Uh, I, I first want to um, address noticing. Noticing is an important part of any public meeting. Um, we strive to make sure people have as much uh, opportunity or, or pathways to attend these virtual meetings. There's a phone number, there's a, a web link uh, and a Zoom link. Um, and, and we are uh, working uh, now to make sure the notice that was sent out on this particular item is correct. So I do want to turn to the issues that have been raised, um, both by the uh, project planner for the, the recommendation on this project. Um, it, it is, the project is for the Hillside Development Permit to allow construction of an accessory dwelling or accessory structure on the property. And um, it's important to note that the location of that structure is um, in, in an area that uh, avoids uh, the, the steeper spots on the property. And um, furthermore, uh, the, the location of that structure complies with uh, the development standards, setbacks and such, as well as uh, lot coverage. So with regard to the location of the building in this hillside setting. Um, it complies with the, the rules that apply to all of the houses in the area, all of the properties in the area. And it's also proposing a use that is allowed uh, uh, throughout 
our residential zoning districts here in Santa Rosa. And, um, and it also happens to be the, um, to include the accessory dwelling unit, which uh, if it were not for the matter of the hillside development permit for the garage, uh, would be approved with a building permit. There would be no public hearing. Um, so I just wanted to review that because that's a really an important basis for the staff's recommendation on this matter that I need as a zoning administrator to take into consideration. Um, the use, the, the uh, permit that is being uh, requested is um, subject to a number of findings, which um, the planner presents in the resolution. And I think uh, does a good job of outlining the issues that are important, that must be reconciled in order for a, a recommendation to be formulated. Uh, I did speak to the issue regarding the location of the building and the slopes on the property, which is a key uh, consideration for this hillside development. Uh, and it does show that it is um, placed in an area that avoids slopes greater than 25%, nor is it placed in an area on a ridge line that would disrupt a view of the skyline from the major public viewpoint. Uh, one of the comments that was made uh, by the public was it would have an impact on their view. And while I wouldn't disagree, it's not, um, private views are not subject to protection uh, according to the, this zoning code and, and the, the criteria for design review here or the design guidelines. So, um, we do um, um, understand that becomes an issue, but it's not a matter that we can uh, in, um, take into consideration in terms of the, the impact or, or the approval or denial of a permit requested like this. Um, the, the project um, does comply with the height standards. It, it, it sounds, um, as we heard from the, the builder who is involved with this, that it would um, uh, they worked with the city and uh, made, to, made sure that the, the building envelope, its height, its width, you know, its size complies with these requirements. Um, the, the question regarding um, hazards, you know, uh, being in an area where, where there is, um, as we've all probably experienced, a risk of fire. And uh, I just want to note here that um, there is a, a, a very important finding with this permit that uh, helps to assure that when new development like this occurs, that when it, it is established, maintained and operated in a way that wouldn't be detrimental to public health, safety and welfare. And when, when we review projects um, like this at the city in, in any other jurisdiction, I, I might add, it is reviewed by the, the departments, uh, um, including the fire department and I will note there are conditions of approval uh, here um, that that require fire sprinkler, fire sprinklers, which is an ordinary ordinarily uh, applied uniformly applied in projects like this, and that the uh, building department uh, and and uh, development review um, public works department look at access to the street. So um, the siting of the, of the building, including access to it, uh, would not be detrimental, uh, it, we can find, to uh, the public health and safety uh, of the area, um, and, and it won't create an impact. So um, while it, it is new development in an area where it didn't exist before and, and it will be visible to the neighbors, and that is change. Um, it is change that is uh, allowed and contemplated in our in our zoning code um, and in our uh, design guidelines. And there there is not um, it does not have uh, uh, other findings that we might use to, that would be um, suggesting a, another conclusion. So I just wanted to respond to the comments that we've heard now um, because they are fundamental. And I imagine uh, other people who would participate in this meeting from the neighborhood would raise these same points. 
Now, I do want to turn to the um, to the issue of notice here. Um, this this is a core uh, issue, and it troubles me that we aren't able to de decide whether a correct notice was issued here. Um, so I think there are th there is a legitimate question about one aspect of notice that that occurs, uh, or one aspect of the information that's a part of the notice uh, to participate. Um, and, and in these times when we're, when we're coming in on Zoom, uh, it's really important that we do have the correct no, uh, Zoom notice meeting ID. Um, so again, I want to allow for staff to continue to consider this matter. I won't, I'm going to hold off on, on acting on this matter until the end of this meeting. Um, so those of you who are participating, uh, please um, stay tuned in. And, and at the end of the meeting, I will make a determination whether or not uh, notice was adequate and we can move forward or whether this matter needs to be continued. Uh, so with that, I would like to um, move to the next item on the agenda. Uh, and recording secretary, if you can please queue up the item 3.3. And I will now invite um, Connor McKay uh, who is the project planner at uh, for a project at uh, 2021 Park Vista, Santa Rosa. And this too is a hillside development permit. It also includes a minor conditional use permit. Mr. McKay, would you please give your presentation? Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Zoning Administrator. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, so this, there was a um, public hearing request filed for this project prior to the deadline of um, yesterday at 4.30. So um, this project has been continued to a later date. Thank you very much. Um, is, uh, now, uh, is there anyone in the audience who is attending this meeting on this matter? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, um, I will continue this uh, meeting to a date uncertain. Uh, Mr. McKay, I assume, that, uh, I, I just see Mr. Larry Goodwin who has raised his hand. Mr. Goodwin, um, we've moved on to another. Oh, you wish to be recognized. You did have a question. Please let me conclude with, with this issue and I'll, I'll recognize you. Um, could you, um, uh, so this matter will be continued to a date uncertain and uh, we'll move on to the next matter after I recognize Mr. Larry Goodwin. And Mr. Goodwin, if you have a brief question, please, I'll entertain that. Thank you. No, sorry, if, if it sounds like it's been, it's been tabled for now to a later date, somebody's asked for a, a, public, a public hearing on it, is that correct? Are you speaking about item 3.3 .3 on the, yes. um, agenda and you you're an interested party in this matter as well yeah i'm talking about the 2808 canyon side i'm sorry i don't uh yes so this uh we, we have moved from um okay. the canyon side drive matter we will speak about it at the end of this meeting so stay tuned okay, uh, thanks. but now we're just concluding item 3.3 .3, the next next matter okay thank you please uh, lower your hand if you would thank you appreciate it all right thank you mr mckay and i i do believe you're the project planner on the next um item on the agenda item 3.4 conditional use permit 1998 longleaf court and uh, recording secretary i see that you have the presentation up there for mr mckay why don't you proceed thank you Great, thank you, Mr. Zoning Administrator, and thank you, Recording Secretary. Um, so item 3.4 is a minor conditional use permit for a residential fence located at 1998 Longleaf Court. Next slide, please. 
So this project um, came to be by the proposal of a pool in the backyard and the site plan indicated the fence um, would be constructed 10 feet from the back of sidewalk where 15 feet um, is required by zoning code section 2022-050. So this would be the legalization of an existing fence. Next slide, please. This slide shows the project location in the city of Santa Rosa on the northeast um, portion of the city off of Fountain Grove Parkway, uh, 1998 Longleaf Court is the project address. Next slide, please. This slide shows the site plan, um, including the pool and the fence. Um, you can see where the 10 feet is identified from the back of sidewalk where normally 15 feet would be required by the zoning code. Next slide, please. This is an existing aerial of the project site as built. Um, you can see the fence line there. Next slide, please. And this is a northeast elevation looking south. Um, the applicant has uh, planted a landscaping along the fence. Um, uh, next slide, please. This is a southeast elevation looking north back up the street from the previous perspective. Next slide, please. And here's that same uh, location turned to the left a little bit looking west. Next slide, please. Um, so the city, we have not received any public comments about this project. Um, this project qualifies for a class three exemption under CEQA for new construction or conversion of small structures in that the project consists of the construction of accessory structure. Um, I believe planning can make all the right, all the necessary and required findings found in section 2030-060 um, section D. And with that, um, the planning and economic development department recommends that the zoning administrator approve this minor conditional use permit to legalize the existing six foot fence at 1998 Longleaf, located 10 feet back from the back of sidewalk where 15 feet would normally be required by the code. And with that, staff is available for any questions. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. McKay. Um, I, I don't have any questions at this time. Is the applicant in attendance? The applicant is in attendance and is available to answer any questions should any arise. Um, none right now. Uh, could I ask that the site plan showing the fence be put on the screen? And also I will invite the public who wish to comment on this matter to do so. Please raise your hand if you're on Zoom or star nine if you're calling in. Thank you, uh, recording secretary. I see the site plan. I do not see any other member of the public attending wishing to comment. Um, I'm gonna scroll down the list to make sure. Seeing none, I'll close the public. Um, so, Thank you, Mr. Piquet, for your clear report and I think um, equally clear resolution recommending approval for this uh, fence side yard setback reduction uh, facing the street. Um, the big issue often with these fences is, is um, the potential for uh, the vision triangle impact it may have upon um, a, a um, vehicle, a car driving past the project and and having their um, sight line obscured of oncoming traffic. I, I'll note the site plan here does show it's a um, it's well away from that vision triangle, so that's not a concern. Also, um, this this regulation or rules in place for this particular kind of situation that we see here, where um, Without a fence uh, in this location, the property owner would not enjoy what is ordinarily a benefit or um, it's come to be expected by 
for for neighbors or by by the by the owner um, to have rear yard privacy and and they do have a pool in this location. I might add that does require um, an enclosure to uh, help prevent it from becoming a hazard to the neighborhood. So I think all the basis are here for approving this project and the findings were properly made um, by Mr. McKay. So I will approve this uh, requested conditional use permit for a side yard fence setback reduction. Thank you very much. Um, so we now move on to item number 3.5. It's a minor design review, 3965 Occidental Road, California. Uh, this project consists of a security fence improvements around a pg and &E service station. And again, Mr. McKay is the project planner. It's a minor design review permit. Mr. McKay, could you please give me your report? Thank you, Mr. Zoning Administrator, and thank you, Recording Secretary. Um, I actually can't see the presentation at the moment. Great, thank you. Okay, yeah, so as the uh, Zoning Administrator mentioned, this is a PG&E service station security fence improvements project that requires minor design review located at 3965 Occidental Road. And it looks like uh, the date on that was not updated, so that should not say May 21st, it should say July 2nd. Apologies. Next slide, please. And then there's also an update on this slide. Um, so this project consists of security fence improvements at the pg and &E service station located at 3965 Occidental. Um, the scope of work includes the replacement of approximately 2,666 linear feet of existing six foot chain link fencing and gates, not eight foot, um, surrounding the subject property with 10 foot wrought iron fence and 10 foot chain link fence and gates. Next slide, please. Um, this shows the project location in the city of Santa Rosa. It's next to Highway 12, um, located at 3965 Occidental Road. Next slide, please. So here's um, the next, the following several slides will be elevations of the proposed, not elevations, but um, images that show <coughs> the scope of work uh, with a description. Um, this uh, will have the existing six foot high raw iron fence replaced with a 10 foot high raw iron fence um, with associated gate operations being replaced. Next slide, please. The existing six foot fence will be replaced with the 10 foot fence here. Gate operations will be replaced as well. Next slide, please. Existing six foot fence to replace the 10 foot fence. Gate operations to be replaced as well. Existing building is not part of the scope, just the fences. Next slide, please. The existing six foot high chain link fence with a one foot barbed wire will be, will be replaced with a 10 foot high raw iron fence, concrete wall, landscape buffer and lighting to remain. Next slide, please. Existing six foot fence to be replaced with a 10 foot fence with associated gate replacements concrete walls to remain. Next slide, please. Existing six foot wrought iron fence to be replaced with 10 foot fence and associated gate replacement. Next slide, please. Six foot fence with uh, one foot barbed wire to be replaced with 10 foot wrought iron fence. Landscape buffer and concrete wall to remain. Next slide, please. Um, the city has received no public comments about this project. Um, the, the project qualifies for a class three exemption, new construction or conversion of small structures in that the project consists of the construction of accessory structure. Um, planning can make all the necessary findings found in section 2052030. And with that, the planning and economic development part department recommends that the zoning administrator approve this minor design review for this project. This recommendation slide has not been updated. 
but the recommendation is that the planning department recommends you approve this resolution to approve the minor design review application at 3965 Occidental Road for the PG&E service station security fence improvements project. And with that, staff is available for any questions. Apologies Thank for the slides. Thank you. Um, so um, the, uh, the 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 one thing that always kind of troubles me is is in this situation is the establishment of um, areas that appear to be inaccessible. No one claims them, and they become um, places of yeah of um, overgrown vegetation, debris and such. So that, that seems to be happening along at least one of the property lines adjoining. Um, uh, can you show me this site plan again and, and, and explain why this no man land buffer area would remain? Now I'll, I'll, I'll ask the applicant if they're in, in attendance to explain why they couldn't just rely on the um, the wall for the enclosure. Um, I do believe I had a discussion with the applicant about that space and I was wondering if they would be able to add to the existing landscape to um, kind of minimize the visual impact of the fence. But if the applicant is present, um, if you would be able to um, provide any insight on that landscaping space buffer, that would be greatly appreciated. Can we see the, the site plan again, uh, recording secretary? So, um, Mr. McKay, on that exhibit there, um, the fencing along the perimeter is being replaced. And it's and it's when you say wrought iron, do you mean similar to the gate type wrought iron, or do you Correct. mean is it, it, okay? And it's not it's not the the same uh, cyclone fencing with wire on top. It's a wrought iron type feature Correct. For, for design. And the 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 purpose of this project is to improve security because the existing chain link fence with uh, barbed wire has proved uh, not effective to um, uh, individuals who have stolen uh, property from this location. Okay, and, and would that wrought iron fence have barbed wire on top of it as well? No, okay. it would just be 10 feet high with no barbed wire. Okay, so I think that that's a, a material improvement in terms of aesthetics. I think now it's a question regarding the buffer area. Is that buffer area in pg e ownership or is that owned by the adjoining property? Um, I believe based on the conversation I had with the applicant, they do own that portion of the property. Um, I'm trying to find the email exchange that I had with the applicant regarding this, um, but I am struggling to come up with that at this moment. Oh, found it. Um, when I asked about adding a vegetation to this area, the applicant responded with, unfortunately, we cannot add any vegetation due to AC paving being in between the CMU block wall and the chain link fence for maintenance access purposes. Also, if we add vegetation, we won't be able to have that five foot access area that is currently there. So it's, it's a uh, racetrack, if you will, around the outside of the fenced enclosed area that pg e maintains for some reason? Yes. I see. Um, okay. Um, interesting. So um, I think, you know, the, the, the overall um, benefit of this project is that it does replace what I think is a visually very harsh statement made by Cyclone and, 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 and barbed wire. Um, so I, I very much support that. I just had a question about long-term maintenance of that buffer area. Those those can be problematic and unsightly. Um, I do see that there's a CMU wall that is built on the adjoining residential properties 
that protect them from um, having to look at the the courtyard, PG&E's courtyard. Is that true on the set, on the west boundary as well? Um, is is there is there a similar uh, concrete masonry block wall on on, um, on on the west boundary? I believe so. But if the recording secretary could scroll to that. Um, image that would be helpful. In the meantime, I will look at some aerial imagery. Continue with the pictures. Um, based on aerials, it does yeah. look like it is the same on the westward side. Yeah, I see that. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, all right. I'll now uh, invite the applicant. Um, if they wish to make comments to do so. And, and I, I see we have one member, one guest. Um, we could um, recognize that guest. Thank you. Um, my name is Zach Hockett. I work with Blair Church and Flynn. We are the designers who are putting together this uh, design for pg &E. We are working with Roblin uh, Contracting. Um, so, you had a couple of questions that you were discussing, um, and I do have a couple of answers. One of your uh, questions was about that, uh, what you called a, that gap on the south side of the project or plan south at the bottom of the sheet where there's about a 10 foot gap between the new proposed fencing and the existing block wall um, that's part of the residential neighborhood. So pg e does not actually own that entire gap they own about a quarter of it. Um, so what's happened is that the property line, uh, the, the pg and &E's fence is set about two feet off the property line, um, one to two feet, and then the block wall is set back probably about five or six feet. So it is kind of a no man's land that's been uh, just historically was created there when those two properties were developed. Um, yeah, so I, I think the intention, part of the, part of the problem with incorporating that into the PG&E site is that it's not actually their property. Or, you know, they could take up a little bit of it, but not the majority. Um, so I hope that provides a little bit of, of clarification for that. That was the main thing I wanted to bring up and kind of provide a little clarity on. Um, was there any other questions? I, I'm, I'm trying to recall. I think you guys may have had another question. I can't remember. No, mainly the purpose of the setback and whether or not uh, there was consideration for having that uh, buffer area just be part of the courtyard um, okay. and, and how, how to treat that. So your clarification about ownership is helpful. I, I do understand that. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Any other, uh, uh, so now we um, open this matter for public comment and is there any member of the public that wishes to speak on this matter? If so, please. If you're in Zoom, raise your hand, or if you're on the phone, star nine. I am looking at the list here and I see none of the attendees um, wishing to comment further. So I'll close the public um, meeting on this matter. Um, like I stated in my, my comments or uh, questions to the project planner, I think the overall uh, project here is, is is an improvement over cyclone fencing. So I very much think that that's a positive um, change to the community. Um, and so uh, I do appreciate pg &E making this effort and um, unfortunately it is in response to security, but I think this is an elegant way to do that, uh, to provide better security on the site. With that, I'll, I'll note that the um, resolution prepared by the project planner uh, included the appropriate findings in support of uh, the approval of this minor design review and and the conditions of approval are appropriate. So with that, I approve this minor design review for 3965 Occidental Road. Thank you very much, Mr. Connor or Mr. McKay. And now we'll turn our attention to the sixth item on our agenda. It's a conditional use permit for 6194th Street, Santa Rosa. And um, Ms. Kristen A. Tumans is the project planner. Recording secretary, can you bring her presentation on the screen? And Ms. Tumans, if you can give us your presentation. 
Yeah, uh, my presentation is actually a PowerPoint, but we can look at the plans if you'd like. Oh, are you talking about, okay, this is Carmen's? Okay, yes, so this is a existing um, a restaurant, Carmen's uh, Burger and Bistro on 4th Street. And what they'd like to do is brew their own beer for on-site consumption in conjunction with the restaurant. And if we could scroll down a little bit, that um, location map um, shows you where they are located on 4th Street. This is a floor plan of the restaurant um, with the seating towards the front. On the right side is where 4th um, Street is located and the um, the brewing would occur um, towards the back. If you scroll down a little bit more, there's a photo of the dining area and you can see the brewery equipment way in the back of the restaurant. Um, so this is permitted with a use permit. Um, I haven't received any comments in opposition to their proposal. Um, and uh, staff feels that uh, brewing beer for on-site consumption um, is a desirable use um, that would attract business and customers. Um, and therefore we are recommending approval. Thank you. Uh, this is zoning administrator. Um, thank you for your pre presentation. Um, does this uh, change in, I'll say activity, it's not really, is it a change in use? Does it alter in any way parking demand or anything like that? No, because uh, the same people that would um, use the restaurant would also drink the beer. <laughs> so, and it Perfect. doesn't take away any seating. Um, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't affect parking. Okay, thank you. Um, is is the applicant in attendance? Do they wish to comment on this matter? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing no raised hands. Uh, and again, those of you on the telephone, uh, star nine, if you wish to comment, uh, I will uh, then open this matter to the public, or is there any member of the public in attendance who wishes to comment? If so, raise your hand or press star nine. Again, seeing none, I will now close the public meeting and um, and and say that I this uh, thank you very much, Ms. Tumans, for your resolution. It does provide the findings necessary to take action on this. Um, conditional use permit um, and and allow this existing establishment to introduce a beer, beer brewing activity to downtown. Um, so I will approve the uh, conditional use permit with the findings and conditions as proposed. And this matter is done. Thank you very much. Now, we move on to the last item on the agenda. And, and remember, we will return to item, I think it was 3.3 .3 on Canyon side uh, at the end of the meeting. Uh, but this is now turning to, I'm turning to now item 3.7. And um, this demands continues to be the project planner on this. And if you could um, bring your, uh, I see you've got your presentation loaded already and can you, make your presentation, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gustafson. This is 888 4th Street Apartments. It's located at 888 4th Street and 891 3rd Street. If we could move on to the next slide, please. So this, um, the applicant is seeking to um, have an approved minor design review to revise a previously approved 107 unit seven story mixed use tower. Um, to uh, number one, eliminate one floor and two mezzanines, uh, reducing occupied roof height to 75 feet. Uh, second, they wanna eliminate the tail, extended podium, pool and pool building. 
Third, they want to reconfigure the parking podium. And four, um, they're requesting to reduce the unit count from 89 to uh, to 89 from 107. And finally, they're um, maintaining the design theme materially throughout the structure. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is where the project is located on 4th Street. You can see it has a tail that extends um, uh, to front on 3rd. Next slide, please. Here's a close-up view of the project site. The majority of the building would sit on, would front on 4th Street. Next slide, please. Um, it had, this project has a long history um, going back to 2008. Um, it was originally approved, um, the, the DRB approved a seven story mixed use 52 unit condo building. Um, and it's gone through several iterations um, over the years. If I could go to the next slide, please. As you can see, it's been modified over time from seven stories to six stories. Um, and certain aspects of the project have changed. Uh, next slide, please. So in the more recent history on September 23rd, 2016, um, the applicant submitted a designer view and minor use permit for um, the 95 foot tall, 107 unit, seven story mixed use building that the applicant is now seeking to modify. And the um, design review board approved that design. Um, and the zoning administrator approved a minor, a minor use permit for the approved project configuration at 95 feet uh, due to the height. Next slide, please. And um, most recently on April 11, 2019, the Planning Commission approved a, a use permit to allow 884 Street Apartments to project uh, a project to exceed the height limit of the downtown commercial zoning district of 95 feet, allowing a total overall height of 112 feet. So now the applicant is seeking to lower the height. Um, next slide, please. And this is where we come to the project description. And I believe the reason for lowering the height is um, there are certain um, fire conditions and building code requirements once you exceed that 75 feet and the applicant is seeking to avoid those. Next slide, please. Here is the general plan um, and general plan and zoning designations for the project site. So it's a mixture of retail and business services and office and residential. Next slide, please. And here's the zoning, it's for um, CD7, which um, allows for seven stories and up to 95 feet. Um, and additional height is allowed for towers specifically. Next slide, please. And this just shows um, what CD7 allows versus what CD5 allows. So as you can see, um, that block um, across the street has some CD5, which allows up to five stories, 55 feet. CD7 allows for a little bit taller buildings. And um, commercial office, which is uh, the designation for that tail that fronts onto Third Street, allows up to 35 feet. Next slide, please. And uh, the, as far as design guidelines, the project is designed to provide a large urban scale building on 4th Street while maintaining a more um, a modest scale um, building on the commercial office the designated uh, parcel. Um, the project will incorporate street level windows, glass doors along 4th Street frontage, and that will not change with the modifications. And this will help to provide a human scale for the building and provide space for utility and mechanical equipment within the garage. Um, and the, the garage, the parking would be concealed from view by um, the ground floor retail and um, basically the residential portion of the building. Next slide, please. So this is the current site plan. Uh, the majority of the building will front onto 4th Street Next slide, please. So here are elevation comparisons showing you what was approved 
than what's now currently proposed. Uh, what was approved was a much taller building um, at 112 feet. Um, you can see it's been scaled down quite a bit. And as you can see on Third Street, there was originally propo proposed to have sort of a pool building and second garage entrance that's been eliminated from the current proposal. Next slide, please. And here is, um, you can see the elevation from Brookwood. Um, on the approved side, you can see the, the pool building and um, second garage opening that's now been eliminated on the current proposal. Next slide, please. Uh, this project is categorically exempt from CEQA. Uh, it's applied to infill developments consistent with the general plan and zoning regulations. Pursuant to technical studies prepared, the project would not result in any significant effects relating to traffic, noise, air quality, or water quality. Uh, the site can be adequately served by all required utilities and public services. Next slide, please. So this recommendation has not been updated, but planning and uh, the planning department is recommending uh, approval of the applicant's request, which is to lower the height to 75 feet. Maybe if you can go back to the project description. I have one quick question yes. while you're doing that. Um, will access continue to be provided uh, to the rear of the property to uh, along that uh, handle? I don't believe so in, in this, um, with this phase. Um, the applicant has um, noted some interest in developing Third Street in the future, but not at this time any longer. Um, before the meeting this morning, there was a concern with the fire conditions on uh, the resolution. Um, the applicant, Mr. Futrell, had some issues with conditions 20 and 21 uh, relating to fire. Um, I spoke with Ian Hardage in fire and he modified his fire conditions to address his concerns. And those can be incorporated into the final resolution. Um, and they specifically, uh, they're specifically uh, conditions 20 and 21. Do you have proposed uh, modification language ready at this time? Yes, I have the revised fire conditions. Let's uh, return to that after we okay. um, go through this uh, item. Um, does that conclude your presentation? Yes. Thank you very much. I uh, now um, give the applicant or their team uh, opportunity to comment. Um, please raise your hand and we'll recognize you in turn. I see no um, uh, request to be recognized from the, from the, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, I do now have one. And uh, recording secretary, if you could recognize Mr. Futrell. Mr. Futrell, you should have a problem. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, we hear you. Thank you. Sorry about the technological glitch. Um, we so, are all challenged. 
I am more challenged than the average challengee, I'm afraid. Um, so as, as uh, has been described, this project has gone through multiple reiterations. Um, and uh, uh, we expect to be able to proceed ahead with this project should it receive approval today. We, in fact, took the risk uh, after consultation with the planning department of moving forward on our construction drawings at our own risk. These, in fact, have begun to be plan checked at our own risk by Coastland um, with the city's approval. And uh, uh, once uh, the ZA approval is obtained, we will immediately submit for building permit and expect to have a groundbreaking in, uh, in September. Um, so we're, we're hoping we've met uh, uh, the standards to get an approval today. The uh, uh, project is pretty straightforward. I'm here uh, with David De Los Santos, project architect with TLCD. He's also a principal of TLCD. He and I can both respond to uh, any questions that you may have. On the issue of the uh, two lots, um, the tail and the other lot are both owned by my firm. They'll be merged. I believe merger is a condition of, of the, uh, of the um, um, uh, approvals. Um, and we will proceed with a separate design uh, for a second phase at some point in the future. Um, other than that, I will, will stop there and we're happy to respond to any questions. Yeah, yes, I, I want to ask you the same one I asked um, uh, Ms. Simmons regarding access. Will there be access across that property at the rear um, or, or is it all forward uh, facing to the north? Um, under the existing proposal, there is no access to the rear. We will use the rear for construction mobilization. When a second phase is constructed, um, there will be some form of pedestrian connection uh, between the two sites, uh, mm -hmm. but that would be worked out in conjunction with the site plan of the second phase. Thank you. And then the other question is, have you had opportunity to review the revised uh, fire conditions today? And do you I, accept those? I do, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Anyone else on your team wish to make a presentation or comment at this time, question mark? I actually did have one other point which I neglected to mention. My memorandum talks about a reduction to 89 units. The correct number I believe is 90 units. It has no effect on the design, parking or anything else, um, but the number is 90 and not 89. Thank you for pointing that out, I appreciate it. Um, so uh, at this time, I will now open um, the matter to the public for comments. Anybody who wishes to do so, please, if you're on the Zoom meeting, please raise your hand. Or if you're on the telephone, star nine, and we will watch for you and recognize you if you wish to comment. Seeing none, I'll close the public meeting. Um, yes, this, this project has had a lot of visits to the city and we hope um, its configuration will land in a way that allows it to be built. It certainly is going to be a great addition to downtown, not just for needed housing, but setting the stage for um, construction in the, in the area or design in the area. Um, I, I will... Um, uh, approve this design review request. I, I do have a couple of questions and for the project planner, did this matter need to go to um, the design review board for concept review? No, I don't believe that that was a requirement for this project. Okay. It's. Uh, it's returning to the zoning administrator because that's where it was last approved. Yes, and um, this type of use would only require a minor design review. Right. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. Good point. Okay. Good. Um, and then let's let's turn to um, how we modify this 
resolution in hand uh, to include the new conditions 2021 that deal with the fire and also um, uh, reference all the references in the unit count in the resolution from changing those from 89 to 90. Um, are, do you have um, the revised conditions in a form that they can be displayed? Um, I, Yes, I can share the revised um, fire conditions if that's what you're asking. Yeah, could you mm -hmm. please? Sure. There you go. Here we go. Sharing now. So um, these were the revised fire conditions that were sent to Mr. Futrell um, this, um, this morning. Here, let me scroll slower a little bit. So do these correspond to conditions are we swapping the yes. all of the fire conditions with these? Yes. And, and and the material change was to the to the language on conditions twenty and twenty one. Which which are those? Is that condition six and seven in front of us now? Let me confirm. It is. It, 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 I'm looking. So twenty and tw number twenty has to do with a key box that was. Um, the fire department is requesting for fourth and third street. That's, I be, believe that's a remnant when there was some development on third street. And then 21 was, uh, it states the structure will be required to obtain an annual operations permit for a high rise building through the fire department. And since the height was lowered, it's not considered a high rise any longer. I see. Okay. Well, so let's simplify this. Um, the numbering on, on your resolution is different than what we have here, but these are the entirety of, of the fire conditions. I'm going yes. to um, I'm going to um, approve the project uh, as recommended by staff with a modified resolution to reflect um, to, to with with the replacement fire condition in your memo that you're showing here dated today today. Uh, today, July yes. 2nd, yes, and which has been previously reviewed and accepted by um, Mr. Futrell, and also um, with changes to the resolution to reflect that the the proposed new building will be a 90 unit building, not 89 units. Um, uh, if you could provide that modified resolution, I will. Um, I will I will sign it. So okay. there, I, I have um, acted on this matter, approved the, the change in design on this uh, residential mixed use tower. And, um, and that concludes our uh, discussion on this. We have one issue we need to address on item 3.3, Canyon side, um, no, excuse me, 3.2. Uh, and I'd like to, uh, um, note that while we've been working through the agenda, staff has checked the um, notice that was sent out. There were two notices sent out on that project for the um, minor hillside development permit. And we did find um, that the information to connect or to log on to the Zoom meeting was, was incorrect. Um, so what I want to do is to continue this hearing and I'd like to see if we can do so to a date certain, um, but that we we resend that notice with the correct Zoom meeting so that we can help to ensure that there's full neighborhood participation in this matter uh, so that their concerns or um, uh, opinions are, are able to be voiced in this public meeting context. Um, I, so now I ask recording secretary, um, 
when would be the next available date um, uh, for that, that would allow for a, a corrected notice to be sent out 10 days in advance? August 16th. I'm sorry, July August, 16th. July 16th. July 16th. Okay. So, um, so technically, uh, the notice will provide everybody that information. Uh, typically, um, when we continue a matter to a date certain, we don't have to send out a new notice uh, to do so. But in this case, um, it's important that we we have that corrected notice go out for July 16th so that um, everybody has the right Zoom meeting login information. Um, I, I apologize for the inconvenience that may have caused, um, but let's resume discussion on this matter um, on that date. Um, so with that, um, I will uh, adjourn the July 2nd meeting of the zoning administrator. And again, I appreciate all of those who are in attendance um, and uh, hope to see you come back soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Have a great 4th of July weekend.